Okay, so wife's asleep, kids are asleep, but I can't go to sleep because I can't stop thinking about how to install the new Cali Purple. So maybe like yourself, I saw the announcements on social media about Cali Purple. It sounded cool. And like yourself, I found this GitLab page. I see some folders here. I see some files here. And it starts off in the README section, just like any other software you've done this a bunch of times with, right? Got a cool logo, got some information, have an architecture that looks like that could be helpful, right? And then you get to this installation section and it's like, you know, please refer to Cherry Tree Notebook. Well, if you use Kali, you know that Cherry Tree is in there, right? It's like the uh, open source man's Evernote. And um, you open it and Maybe you don't really know what to expect, but you see these different notebook sections and each one seems to line up with uh, what was shown in the architecture diagram, which for some reason is super spaced out. Um, but you, you, you start to open these up and you find things like, oh, installation, and you start to go through some screenshots and they talk about setting up a network interface, some configuration about firewall rule, firewall rules, and then actually getting to the creation of a virtual machine using a hypervisor uh, called Proxmox, right? And you're like, okay, so I'm gonna need uh, a, a hypervisor and I'm gonna need um, some RAM and CPU and, uh, you know, a connection to the internet and, um, you know, a virtual router. And I'm, I'm going to have to set up some sort of, um, basically a lab, right? A, a training environment. And it looks like these are the hosts that I need to build. And under each host, there's a set of instructions to actually create the host itself. And then to, install the software that's on the host. And maybe that part's not finished, but for some of these sections, you know, there are instructions on how to download or install um, different packages using, you know, the, the, their various installers and runners. So with that much information, you know, you, you, you might want to start planning out what it looks like and just to make it easier to build um, or understand in case you need to do some sort of conversion, like if you can't get Proxmox to work for whatever reason. So um, that's where this network diagram comes in handy. So if we open this thing up, we see that we have, let's just make it bigger. All right, we see that we have the Cali Purple Data Center, okay, and we have a Cali purple something, something. Something. Something, something. All right. Uh, Proxmox, Proxmox virtual environment. That, that I guess that's what it stands for. Anyway, so we have the hypervisor environment. We got some boxes here. We got some network labels. All right. So how many networks do we have? Well, we have an AP over here and wireless or nope, wide area network. And then we got DMZ, but that's three and not two. So uh, looks like two is LAN and it's connected to another access point here. Cali Purple LAN. We got some machines on the side here. Um, this, I guess, looks like a showcase of the showcase of the different services that are present after you build this environment and then interfaces that you could, I guess, connect to on the LAN side and on the WAN side. Okay. And these machines are Cali Pearly sitting in the DMZ and our firewall, gateway, um, 
proxy device, DNS serving device, um, our network protection device sits in front of um, Secure Network Cali Violet, Secure Network Cali Purple, and Secure Network Cali Eminence. And so each one of these is a VLAN with a VM running Cali Linux, I guess. And let's see, there's three of them. So we're gonna need three VLANs. It looks like we have three network zones, WAN, DMZ, and LAN, but um, we'll see about that. And uh, that's that's our environment. So we're gonna have WAN, LAN, and DMZ. And underneath the LAN, we're gonna have, what was that? Cali Violet. And then we're gonna have SSN Cali Purple. And then we're gonna have Cali Eminence. Okay. Let's make that a little wider. All right, so we have our networks. What about the machines? So not a lot of information here about the actual specs of the machines. We do get the software they're running, but what we really care about comes from this installation. So for Cali Violet, Okay, we got Cali Violet, Byzantium, we got Cali Purple, Cali Eminence, others, Cali Heliotrope. Cali Pearly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And we're going to skip purpose and just go straight to the machine stats. So, Cali Purple, what are we working with here as far as. Can I make that smaller? Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, about this, pinch in the mouse? No, all right. So we have operating system of Kali Linux 22.4. Okay, got some virtual graphics stuff. Disk size storage is gonna be 128 gigabytes. CPU is going to be 4. And what about RAM? 8192. 8192. Okay, great. Let's go to Byzantium now. That's going to have. Let's see. Does it say here? 93 gigs. 32 right now, that's the entire server. Okay, anyway. Looking for a disk, 128, okay. Is that the same for both? Yeah. 128 gigs. Okay. Um, let's go 
back to the Byzantium install. 128 gigs of RAM, or 128 gigs of storage. Two vCPUs. And 2048 of RAM. Okay. What's this next one? Cali Purple. What are we working with? 2048. Wow. It's a lot of storage. 2048. That must be our sim box. Four CPU. And we have 2048. 2480. 2480. Oh, wow. Okay. Oof. Um. Our hypervisor is going to be bigger than what I have in my home lab. Perhaps we will have to do this in the cloud. Might have to do this in the cloud. Or order some more equipment, but obviously the cloud's going to be faster. Okay, and Cali Eminence. Is that Cali Eminence? Yes. Okay, Cali Eminence. How many resources are you going to use? 512 of size disk. Six CPUs, okay. Sixteen gigs of RAM. Okay. Do, 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 do. This is Cali Heliotrope. I'm gonna have 64 gigs of RAM, or disk, jeez, I keep saying that, 64 gigs of disk, we're going to have 128, what? Storage, SCSI 1, LVM, why do we have two disks? SCSI 0, SCSI 0, this one is 128, this is 128, backup, backup, SSD emulation, default, no cache, no URS, these are all the same, this is the same, same thing, only one has 128, one has 64, so let's, let's put 128, or Uh, or 164. I wonder if, um, well, it could probably be weird if Excel had a notation to be like, hey, it might be this one, it might be that one, it depends. Alright. So, two CPU, how much RAM? 4096, okay, not so bad. 4096. And now we need to do Kelly Pearly. And there aren't any specs for Kelly Pearly. It's just running DVWA, which, hmm. DVWA, if we look at that, damn vulnerable web application, and that is, what are the requirements? Requirements, if you want more info, see the, oh, that's for PHP, 
Hmm. Requirements. In order to use these, you need to have these are, uh, are things to compile into your, your build. These are other things. Let's just say for our damn vulnerable Linux or damn vulnerable web app. Let's just copy everything from before and make this 64. And I made a typo here. Okay, so this is the sum of this. In case these change. This is going to mess it up, so let's just call it 64. Okay, so we need 20 CPUs, 54 RAMs, and 2944 storages. Mm. I have a 24 CPU machine with 60 something RAMs and only about either it's either a terabyte or half a terabyte of storage so I'm sure in storage, but it's also very loud and everyone is asleep. So I will have to take this to the cloud in the next video and we'll see what it actually looks like to build this out. Um, that's all I got for now, but this is how far I've gotten. Maybe you've gotten this far too. Maybe this helps you, um, you know, go figure out what the next stage is right all, all you needed to know was that this um this workbook exists if that's the case you know follow along and uh drop me a line if you get it up and running if you notice something that uh you know worked really well for you or um you know if you if you have access to the lab and you'd like to demo it that, that'd be pretty neat so um, reach out and share your tips and we're all probably just waiting until they come out with the install script but um, before that if anybody is adventurous enough to kind of work through this notebook that they've they've put up um, and learn a new hypervisor if you haven't already used Proxmox and um, you know set up a, an open sense box a lot of PFSense fans out there probably are familiar with, with the fork, um, but maybe never use the actual thing. So, you know, that, that'll be a new fun thing. And then, you know, sitting around for the hours as these things uh, spin up these Docker containers and Java heavy um, web apps. Let's. Let's uh, let's let's keep working on it. I'll be posting, you know, as I make progress on these things. And if you want, you know, reach out, uh, join the Discord server, share your progress. Uh, if you have any comments or recommendations, let me know that stuff too. But yeah, that's what I got for now. I'll uh, check in soon.